Jeez. Technology. Can't we just freaking dance and uh uh not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could. Yeah. I wish it was that simple. No, that's okay. This this is for posterity, so yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, well welcome everyone, jazz lovers, jazz dancers. Uh, we have decided to gather today to have a little discussion with Joel Hall and Carrie Flannery. Uh, regarding their work with Fred Benjamin. And as we know, uh, a lot of the work has gone under noted. And so we wanted to have a conversation today to fill in some of those gaps and to share some of the jazz love. Um, Joel and Gary, would you like to both introduce yourselves and just tell a little bit about your long careers in a short amount of time? <laughs> Joel, you first. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Joel Hall, uh, Artistic Director Emeritus of the Joel Hall Dancers and Center. Uh, I have been in the business for about 50 years now and have uh, had a company for about 47 of those 50 years. Mm. And um, actually moving into our 47th year, I believe, or 48, one, one of these, something close to 50. It's fabulous. At any rate, um, I'm very excited to be here and share it with Gary today and with Jackie and with our lovely audience about some stories about Fred Benjamin, who is one of the most ingenious young uh, choreographers that I ever met in New York when I was living in New York. Uh, I was taking classes at the um, Park Center where he was teaching. And he also was teaching at the West Side Y, I believe. Uh, and while he was kind of teaching all over the place, he was teaching out of the country as well. So Fred had been around for a very long time and very, very well known in the professional world. So I'm actually uh, very excited to be here and talk about him today. Gary, how, how about, what are, what are your, what well, is, what I, uh, I am celebrating my 65th year in dancing. Um, so it's, uh, you'd think I'd be good by now. But oh. <laughs> never, never stop learning, I guess. Never so. stops. Never stops. <laughs> but um, I, I had uh, quite a remarkable introduction to Fred Benjamin. Uh, I was out on the first tour of Pippin and um, and I was doing, uh, I'm afraid to shut this one thing down. But, um, and so I came back after nine months on the road with Pippin and in, back into New York City where I'd been for a little while. But uh, I was desperate to take a class. And so I heard about this Fred Benjamin guy. And by this time he had his studio up on 55th Street and a small little place. Uh, mm -hmm. With the middle of the summer, maybe July or August or something in hot, sweaty New York. So um, I go into this small studio and there's maybe 40 dancers or more in there. I'm the only white person in this class. And, um, and it's like 120 degrees in this little studio. And, uh, and so I start overworking, you know, quite my usual and uh, sweating bullets and uh, so he goes through like a standing warm-up first and then you sit and warm up and then get up and start dancing so i get through the standing warm-up the sitting warm-up and start to get up from the sitting warm-up and pass out cold onto the floor well next thing you know i'm being uh, woken up out in this little lobby um, and all these black dancers are around me. Oh my God, we killed the white boy. We killed the white boy. <laughs> and they're fanning me off and stuff out in this, in this little lobby. And, and, um, and it's like, oh my God. So they're putting ice on me and giving me water and stuff. And, uh, and so I kind of stumbled embarrassingly out of the studio that day. Um, came back the next day though and uh, started anew and Next thing you know, I'm in Fred Benjamin's dance company. And, <laughs> um, and so... It was uh, the feigning that did it. That, that uh, 
<laughs> it was you know, the painting that made that happen. Fred told that story for years, how, you know, I fainted in his class. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> everybody um, fainted in that class. Everybody pretty much, you know, I think was, yeah, you know, I, I never went to his Clark Center classes, I think, you know, before that. Although I used to go there and take this uh, Chuck Davis's class mm -hmm. there, which were really fun. I, I liked primitive dance and stuff. Um, this, well, that's where we learn everything from, so. That's right, exactly. And, good, good and point, I had first right. done that with, with Jeffrey Holder, the Harkness uh, Ballet back in like 66 or something. And I uh, was in his African Ballet, this akimbo piece that he set for Harkness. And, uh, and I really liked it and enjoyed it. So I used to then go and take Chuck Davis's class at, at uh, Clark Center. But anyway, that was my intro to Fred Benjamin. <laughs> Joel, was your first class with Fred at the Clark Center? Actually, it was at Clark Center. Uh, my first classes at Clark Center were with Thelma Hill and um, mm. Pepsi Bethel, mm -hmm. which was a long time ago. <laughs> Oh yes, well, but Fred was also teaching. Fred was also teaching at Clark Center, and I did take his class a couple of times. Not as much as I did with Pepsi and with Thelma, because that was really the focus of where I was headed at that time in terms of jazz. And Fred was very, very bad balletically oriented at that time, and he had studied um, uh, ballet. He, he, his introduction was jazz, I believe, and then he went to ballet. Same kind of story that I have. Actually, there's so many parallels to us because Tally Beatty was his mentor. Yes. And Tally was my mentor as well. Terrific. So, you know, even those stories uh, between uh, Fred's experience with Tally and my experience with Tally were the same. I mean, because he was a crazy person, mm -hmm. but absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I, I think most crazy people are brilliant. I agree. I think. Most brilliant people are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like Bob Fosse, you know. But. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So uh, I loved it. I loved and adored him. I loved his classes. I think, uh, again, my focus at that time was with Pepsi and with Thelma. So I, and with also with Nat, Nat Horn, who was over at the Ailey School. He was teaching over at Ailey. So that was my kind of like real jazz experience in New York outside of Lynn Simonson, yeah. where I also took class with. And Lynn was absolutely brilliant. Out at, at Morelli's studio? Yeah. Yes, at Morelli's on uh, 14th, 14th and 6th sure. Avenue. 14th and 6th. Yep. Avenue of the Americas on that second yeah. floor. We were probably there once or twice together, too. Okay. Well, I used to, we, I, had, I had to sign in every morning uh, right. at 9. You had to sign up by 9 to be in the 11 o'clock class. That's right. That's because right. it was always packed. packed. And if you didn't sign in, you didn't get in. That's right. So I I like that. Oh, I yeah. mean, that's the way it should be everywhere. Yeah. yeah. In terms of that. You know, yeah, you should yeah. have to come and have to sign in before your class and let your teachers know that you're going to be there. And if you miss your class, somebody else has got it. Yeah, Lynn, Lynn had, you know, of course, a lot of similarities with mm -hmm. her and um, we're very good friends you know and um uh i enjoyed it especially like you said it was it was very balletic which yeah. um was my technique i mean i was a balancing student at first at the sab when i was 12 years old and um you know worked with the harkness ballet company and then went to juilliard on a ballet scholarship with anthony tudor and etc um and and yet i i still lean towards modern and and jazz and uh, i worked worked with jose lamon and martha graham at at juilliard uh actually I used to sneak over and take these graham classes at night that i wasn't supposed to be doing uh, 
and uh, with Bertram Ross, uh, we just had amazing classes. And, and, and so uh, the one time I was there even, and they never even charged me to take classes there. I guess men were so in such demand. <laughs> you just kind of walked in and into a class or whatever. And That's kind of the way it was at the Ailey School too. Yeah. You sure. know, if you didn't have the money to pay for class, I mean, sometimes I wouldn't have money to pay for class, but I'd show up anyway. Right. And Tom Stevenson, who was running the mm -hmm. school at that time, would would say, "Okay, Joel, just just go. Just go. We'll right. take the class." Oh, uh, back to Fred Benjamin. What what a delightful, you know fun guy i mean he he always had a smile on his face you know as hard as you were working and and sweating and and frustrated even in classes or rehearsals or whatever you know you just had to look at fred and and that smile you know and 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 feel good about it all and and that was a gentle man he was he was, he was a, gentleman, and, a giant of a gentleman Absolutely, I, yeah. I, uh, I, I respected that so much in him. I, I think that people do want it now too, but in a very different way. Well, it, it, it's more the spectacle, I think, Yeah. that, that they enjoy, mm -hmm. uh, which I can understand, of course, too, you know. But for me, and one of the things that Fred taught me as I teach my students um, was to enjoy every, every aspect of of your dance, you know, um, from the classes to the rehearsals to the performances, you know, to me it was always the same. You know, mm -hmm. um, e everything, e everything was was great and fun and, and challenging and yet rewarding. And and so it wasn't just the performances. You know, I, I enjoyed the heck out of the performances. I have a review here from 1975 of one of the performances out in, in Queens uh, with Fred's company. And um, uh, so I finally found a few you know, a folder with some Fred Benjamin stuff. Here I have uh, a picture that Fred gave me. Um, All right, Fred. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's Taryn Miles, I think, you know, and Karen Geneva Burke, uh -huh. myself and a girl. Uh, Phyllis or something, I remember. But um, but Fred, you know, not only gave me this picture, but it had it framed and everything and, and then gave it to me many years wow. later. So it was very special. And um, uh, and I have a bunch of pictures too, you know, from those concerts uh, that I just pulled out. They're, they're little... Uh, yeah, the little... Uh, what do you call them? Proof yeah. yeah, proof sheets. And so, uh, you know, I'm going to try and bring up some of them and send send them to you. Uh, cool. To Luke and stuff. Uh, so, so you can see that, you know, it really was me. I was, I was <laughs> really there. And, uh, you know, we, we, we go to these concerts out in Queens and Brooklyn and stuff. And, and again, I'm the only white person within miles, you know, and, and the whole audience was all all African American, you know, black and 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 there's Gary, yeah, how did you feel about that experience of being the only white person in an all black environment? I felt special. I, I felt, you know, that that this was uh, uh, that there was a reason that I was there and and um, as much as I felt special about being Russian and, and Irish and so I mean I was born to dance, you know. Um, the the rhythm you know it yeah was, it was the beat it was the rhythm yeah, I do. you know and so and there was contractions oh. of contractions so Upper. in high <laughs> relief but, um, uh, so so no I I never had a problem with it I I I always felt honored and privileged you know to be there um, and so even as the audience would be screaming go white boy go <laughs> Go get it, you know, like, and I'd start laughing sometimes, you know, even on stage. Um, but uh, but no, I I uh, I never, you know, separated 
you know, any of those colors from, from one another. Gary, you talked a little bit about the structure of Fred's class. Yes. Joel, Joel do you have anything to add into that? Do you remember some of the elements um, and, and how you utilize them in your teaching today? Well, I know that Fred's class for me was not, I mean, it was a very fast uh, floor, floor bar and then a fast standing bar. Mm -hmm. So the class was about moving. <laughs> yes. yes. And he would get through that. He would, that, that uh, warm up was very fast. You well, know, it was, it was already completely structured. And yeah, so, you know, you just, all, go ahead, Gary. No, you're right. It was it was very fast, and it was it was already you know complete. Um, yeah, as like Jaime Rogers used to teach, you know, mm -hmm. the same way. You know, you just like zip through those warm ups, and um, but then like hold on because <laughs> the competition work, right? be, be long and and tedious. You know, uh, mm -hmm. and Fred. Um, as much as anything, I think I remember too, you know, was, was that speed, as you said, you know, in, in teaching combinations. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I am certain of the fact that he never made up combinations before the class. Um, I don't think he ever even thought about it. it maybe he thought about was the music he was going to use. And, um, but uh, but no, it's just all you know his improvisational sort of choreography that would would blossom immediately in that class, and mm -hmm. and he would structure it kind of as to who was in class. Some sometimes if he if he saw more concert you know ballet dancers, then he'd throw in double tours and things, you know, um, and uh, uh, and yet as you said, it was very tally beady. Uh, mm -hmm. It was it was this wonderful lyrical jazz, you know, that they call today lyrical jazz. I mean, no, these these were the guys that invented and created that. You know, exactly. You're exactly right, and I think um, Fred was a major major contributor to the scene in New York as far as uh, jazz is concerned. I think we didn't hear a lot about him outside of New York except mm -hmm. for probably in Europe. But, you know, he had a very extensive choreograph uh, choreographic career with other people before he was teaching. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, oh, yeah. Fred, Fred, Fred was, uh, I believe he danced with, uh, let's see, who did he dance with? I know he worked with Tally. Yes. But he also worked with a couple of other uh, people in, I believe in the, it was in Hollywood. I know he did Ho Hello, Dolly. Yes, he did. He did. Dolly. He, he did a couple of different Broadway pro things. Promises. Yep. He always uh, talked about Graham. Promises. promises. What yes. else did he do? Well, he didn't work with the Graham Company, I don't think. He, he certainly, you know, studied. Um, yeah intensely you know Graham and and the choreography and the technique uh, because I think a lot of the the floor work and and mm -hmm. you know was very Graham you know mm -hmm. oriented uh, and, and he would be the first to admit it you know if you're gonna if you're gonna borrow from people then you know you may as well uh, pick the it <laughs> Yeah, Jackie, getting back to your question earlier, I think that's one of the things that I learned from Fred was the construction of my class. Mm -hmm. And that I knew that I had to have a syllabus in order to get the outcome. So I began working on my syllabus for my class. And that's why we have the method as it is now. Although even the method has gone through a transition over the years and will continue to evolve as, you know, the technique uh, evolves or as the style evolves. So whichever you want to call it. So I think uh, that was one of the things that I learned from him. I think the other thing that I learned from him was something that Gary mentioned was that his, his kindness. 
was he was always always kind and i never had an instance of uh any kind of discomfort with him friction or or yeah. friction or tension or anything like that it was you know a purely a purely student uh teacher relationship and also a friend mm -hmm. a relationship so it was really it was really uh he was really a very unique individual uh that shared a lot with a lot of choreographers in uh in new york Fred was always envious of all, all my turquoise and my jewelry <laughs> he had a couple of pieces and and every time i'd come back from a tour or whatever and jump back into his class or something in new york and um and it was always great fun then you know when he started like up at steps and stuff you know teaching and um and i would come in and and nobody would know me from adam and now you know at least half the class is is white you know uh if not more so um but there's like six or eight tall muscular men in class now you know eight or ten guys even and, and you know they'd be in like the first group and stuff you know and um and yet whenever i would come into class fred would always call me my name first and i'd go walking up like front and center and then you'd hear this what, what, what the hell who is that jesus christ you know who the hell is this shit <laughs> so, like, yeah okay boys it's all right you know just give me a lot of room that's all just you know stay a good five feet away okay <laughs> uh, i'm gonna be coming at you so okay <laughs> that's the way you do it that's the way that's how you get the part and fred, <laughs> and fred knew it you know and, and we'd laugh and snicker and stuff you know and then start throwing in all these turns and tours and things that uh, um you know i would just blaze through and um but but it was always great fun and and for me the greatest thing that i did with fred was was to bring him down to and out of new york city uh, you know i brought his company i think the only time he ever performed outside of the new york city area mm -hmm. uh, down into bucks county in pennsylvania and philadelphia at the mm -hmm. academy of music and i produced his company there um and that was quite a company at that point but I would bring Fred down for master classes, you know, all the time in my studio in Bucks County, where I'm originally from. Um, and the students just adored him. You know, he was he was so great, you know, and then I'd get to take, you know, my Fred Benjamin fix. And so, um, you know, but I think mainly came because of my wife's cooking that, uh, that I enjoyed. <laughs> So, <laughs> rather than his his little stew that he you know made up himself or whatever okay eating out all the time but uh, but we we became really good friends and 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 i i just thank god you know for every minute that i got to spend with him i i just had so much respect and love for him and and his work and and his, his lack of of uh, title and recognition never seemed to bother him very much, you know, um, which is sad in a way, you know, because he deserved so much more. He, I mean, you, you look at uh, the dancers, Marilyn Banks, and all of these incredible dancers that went through his company, all the way back to Debbie Allen and Michael Peters. And right. there's there's a shot of his first company in like 1969 or something, you know, in New York City, and and there's Michael Peters and Debbie Allen together. So, I mean, hello. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, where do you think their all their technique and choreography came from? And, right. Uh, so Fred, you know, and and then I. Um, there were other people that were teaching like Fred's class verbatim at Ailey, you know, and, and everybody's thinking, you know, this is Ailey technique and, and it's Ralph Barrington and stuff, you know, and thinking this is Ailey, you know, class and technique and it's like, you know, this is Fred Benjamin class verbatim, 
you know, and he just taught this combination last week, you know. <laughs> so, and they're doing it this way, huh? And and as much as that happened, I, I felt for Fred, you know, but but he never seemed like it, it bothered him too much. He would just plow on and, and get get the company together whenever he could, you know. It wasn't a real formal company with a set schedule and and you know, whenever he would have enough dancers around, you know, in class and stuff, then then he would throw a performance together. Mm -hmm. You know, like that. Um and so it's a shame again he didn't have more money, I mean, but yet uh he, he was the best. Yeah. Gary, I think that you brought up a very interesting point because I'd just like to say that I think for most uh, dancers of color during that period in the 1970s and 80s, mm -hmm. I mean, certainly we were we were able to get work and we were able to do work, but it was very minimal and it was very uh, not a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. It was very not a lot of money. Oh, yeah. So um, uh, I think that a lot of the dancers of color were doing it just for this, simply for the reason of love of the art form and love of the discipline and love of the, uh, the class or the teacher. Right. Uh, and we were, we were just in there just to get as much information as we possibly could and have a lot of fun and yep. get to know everybody and it was a very very kind of different atmosphere than uh chicago had because chicago was a very 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 segregated city, as new york was yeah. but we had a very limited amount of what we was possible I so that's that. why yeah. someone like uh Fred was able to take that in, you know, just take it in, deal with what he, his situation was, and move himself and his vision forward. Yes. That's how I saw him. He was a very strong-minded person with a focus and a purpose. Gary and Joel, I have, um, I have two questions for you. So, you know, we're here to celebrate the work of Fred Benjamin and uh, how he has made such great contributions to jazz. But the two of you have made such great contributions to jazz as well. So what do you think is uh, the, the most important thing that Fred Benjamin has left us in his legacy? And what is the most important thing that the two of you are leaving us with your legacy? Gary, you want to go first? Um, I'll try it, I guess. Um, okay. Again, for me, it, it's always been the, the search for uh, a completion, you know, completion of of all of the techniques that I've learned and worked on, you know, my whole life, um, incorporated then into what I teach and what I choreograph or direct as well. And so um, it was always a, a vision to to try to search out, you know, more and more and more, um, and and work with the best. Uh, I I had a, quite a long list of of people that I would not work with mm -hmm. for any reason whatsoever, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, because they were nasty too, you know, and and so so for me, I I hope that I bring not only that wisdom and that that challenge you know, that I learned from from Fred Benjamin and, and teachers like Fred, um, but that, you know, that there's an ethics about it. And, and you, you have to, you have to be willing to accept, you know, the fact that, you know, you may have good days, you may have bad days, um, but, but you plow on. And, and as you said, you, you strive, you know, for, uh, for better things all the time. And, and um, that that was Bob Fossey, that was Fred Benjamin. Fred, you know, did it with a smile. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's me. And you, look at your smile, see? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the thing that I got from both of them was uh, probably the word humility. Mm. Um, because I think that both of them are humble, 
but they're they're so good that they're humble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always so, struggled. I, I always struggled with humble. But, yeah. But, <laughs> uh, okay. But um, you know, I think it was just the competitive nature. Yeah. That, you know. Yeah. Well, for a lot of people, it is competitive, Gary. But there are there's this whole other genre of non-competitive dance. Oh, yes. you, you like my hand? I Wait love it. See my neck. I love it. Please. <laughs> 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 Let me see some good contractions, though. I want to. I want to see that upper body get. What is, get moving. You want to see that upper release? <laughs> there we go. See. Are them shimmy shoulders? Oh God. Now I can work you on the stage. <sighs> okay, let's, let's try go. it. Let's try it. <laughs> and I'm an old man. <laughs> Okay. Oh. But you know, I still love teaching. I still love my work and I still love my dancers. I still love my audience. I still love my purpose. And I think that as long as I can maintain those relationships mm -hmm. and my relationship with my inner spirit and my inner, don't not questioning my inner self, but accepting my inner self for whatever it is. Mm -hmm. and not being afraid to say what it is I have to say as a choreographer because I think that all of us Gary have something to say in our work uh, especially in concert dance if we're doing concert dance we I make social statements in my work because <clears throat> because they need to be made and I think that uh, it's I your think, voice yeah yeah yeah, and I think that it is important to tell the truth mm. and that people will identify with that, mm -hmm. okay? And because I think that every person that comes to see something that you're in is not just coming to see it because you're in it. They're coming to see it because you're dancing it. Yeah. Well, you are choreographing. Seems to be working for you so far, Joan. So yeah, you know what? You know I am so blessed. You are. You are. I really am, and I re I realize that. I realize that blessing because I know that it didn't have have to be this way. Yeah. Yeah. For a lot of people, so you know, even to be alive today is a blessing. Yes, it is. Yep. So, so especially with this COVID thing. So as we're coming up on our hour, uh, we want to acknowledge that we're celebrating uh, jazz and the vision of what it will look like in the future. And so part of that is to continue to celebrate the past. So Gary, we are very much looking forward to your Fred Benjamin master class that will be coming up with us shortly. Um, is there anything you want to share with the listeners about the class so they can uh, register nope. with us? Yep, the, the class that I'm going to be teaching is actually the combination that Fred uh, choreographed on my dancers at the College of DuPage when I brought him to Chicago. A um, little different combination than what he taught uh, down at, at your place, though. It mm -hmm. uh, was such a great experience for him and I as well uh, when we came downtown to your studio and we danced. Um, such a blast. And... Uh, uh, so, so this combination is um, very dear to my heart, and and uh, it's, it's balletic, it's jazz, it's modern. Uh, there's some floor work involved, so so I've got to have my assistant, you know, Faye is going to help me see some of this since they don't go on the floor and roll around very well. You know. <laughs> I'll take, the rolling days are over, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, nothing on the knees, no knee turns. That's why you know, no knee turns. Team heat and stuff. No hinges, please, to the knees. Uh uh. No, no, no. no. Um, no, even back then, I mean, Bob Fosse, you know, at one point in, in dancing, you know, he, he wanted me to do a double tour to the knees, you know. So you land on your arches and, and go down to both knees. And, and I did it once and hurt like hell. I mean, oh. you know, and he's like, okay, that's great. I said, yeah, but I ain't doing it, Bob. Like, 
you know, I'm sorry, I'm not doing this over and over again. He's like, well, I used to have this guy, you know, duh, that did it. I was like, yeah, was he still walking? <laughs> like, no, I'm not. So instead I did a big back flip, you know, which was uh -huh. hard anyway, but uh, at least I didn't have to cr crush on what to my knees, you know. Oh my God. But, um, but no, so, so no need, no, no need turns or anything, but but a little lyrical, sort of um, very fun. We're going to do Earth, Wind, and Fire, uh, Serpentine Fire, uh, which is very Fred Benjamin. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, so that's our that's our two hour class. Yeah, you know, if I if I make it through it alive, <laughs> it's great doing it's gonna be fun. lots of little fossy hands and things. <laughs> and, but doing Fred Benjamin is considerably harder. It's yeah. not a joke. <laughs> so I encourage everyone to register for class and join us and Gary as we celebrate uh, some history of jazz. And I want to thank you both for sharing and informing us so we can continue to create jazz in the future. Thank you, Jazz. <laughs> thank you, Joel. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Gary. Yeah.